Strangers found a four-year-old boy wandering alone by himself outside the store this morning. I'll have more details coming up. With Kentucky's primary set for next week, we're getting another visit from former President Bill Clinton. We have a flash flood watch in effect throughout the rest of the afternoon off into the nighttime hours. I'm going to show you how much rain we're expecting and also if we're expecting a severe threat. That's coming up. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon from WKYT News. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Barbara Bailey. We're mostly dry in the bluegrass right now, but more <laughs> showers and storms are heading this way for the afternoon and evening hours, and some of those could be severe. Once again, but with all the rain we've seen this week, flooding continuing as a concern, and we remain under a WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day to keep you informed. Here's meteorologist Micah Harris, who's tracking it all. Yeah, and as we talked about this morning, there's really not a great chance all the way through about 2 p.m. of any rain. Once you get after that, then we're talking about some of these showers and thunderstorms sparking up and causing us a few issues as we head off into the evening hours. The energy is now crossing over the uh, Mississippi River. Now, that's heading eastbound. You're getting some popping up just south of Nashville. That's heading northbound. So there's going to be some spotty storms out ahead of this before we actually see the main line travel on through. That actually helps us out a little bit, kind of uh, calms down the atmosphere just a bit before that uh, main piece of energy actually slides on through. So storms will be on the increase. We'll be there in the lower 80s before the storms actually arrive. And the focus, obviously, today, those rounds of showers and thunderstorms, and that severe threat is minimal, but it's still there, okay? We cannot rule that out as it travels on through. The main thing we're going to be concerned about, the very heavy rainfall on top of what we already have outside on the ground and in the ground, okay? So we're going to be talking about a flood threat as we head off through the night, but how much rain are we actually expecting? And I actually have some good news in the forecast. I'm going to talk about both sides of the spectrum coming up. Looking forward to that, and we'll see you shortly. A Lexington mother is facing child endangerment charges here at midday. Police say Kimberly Strayon's four year old son was found wandering alone in a store parking lot about a block away from his home on Ward Drive. That was about 8 o'clock this morning. And when officers found out where he lived, they also discovered a two year old at home alone. WKYT's Michelle Chamberlain has reaction from a man who found the toddler in this crime tracker report. Barbara and Bill, it was in front of this store in the Winburn neighborhood. A four year old was found by himself wandering in front of the store. Strangers found him, called police. When police arrived, that boy walked him all the way home. Just to give you an idea where the home is, it's past that red car. It's about a quarter of a mile away from this store. The two men say they were heading to work when they saw the boy by himself around 8 o'clock this morning. Roderick Fee says he passed by and couldn't help but stop to make sure the boy was okay. Thinking about my kids, you know. I mean, what mother leaves a kid out there like that? You know, I mean, don't make no sense to me. We look for his. We, we rolled around and look for his mother. See, was it a mother looking for her kids? Wasn't nobody. Police say the boy walked them back to his house. When they went inside, they found a two-year-old by herself in a crib. Their mom, Kimberly Sturgeon, eventually came home and told police she was taking her oldest to school and a neighbor was supposed to be watching her kids. Police say the neighbor told them that wasn't true. Sturgeon was cited with endangering the welfare of a minor. Police say Child Services has been contacted. In Lexington, Michelle Chamberlain, WKYT. Michelle, thank you. And all the charges against her are misdemeanors, by the way. An elderly man is fighting for his life this midday after a standoff with police. It happened at a house on Amsden Avenue across from the Versailles Hospital. Police say 89 year old William R. McDaniel barricaded himself in the home before shooting himself in the head. He's been taken to the hospital with life threatening injuries. A KSP robot retrieved the gun before officers from the strategic response team entered the home. A Central Kentucky school bus driver arrested for DUI while on the job answered to the charges in court today. Brian Fletcher was arrested last month at Camargo Elementary School. WKYT's Caitlin Setner is in Montgomery County now with the latest on the case. Caitlin? He bonded out of jail, but it'll be months before a Montgomery County school bus driver will face a judge. Brian Fletcher entered a plea of not guilty Thursday morning, but it'll be September before he's back for pretrial conference. 
The court is waiting on a blood test before moving forward. We sat down with Montgomery County School Superintendent Matt Thompson, who says Fletcher is suspended with pay. He didn't confirm what information the district is waiting on, but says it's waiting on information from the ongoing investigation before moving forward. Fletcher was arrested on a Wednesday afternoon outside Camargo Elementary School a few weeks back after a tip came in. Because of that tip, the bus driver was stopped from driving elementary school children home with a breath alcohol level at .068, according to a citation. The legal limit for a person driving a commercial vehicle is .04. Thompson didn't want to go on camera but said, Our families trust us every day. Anytime we have an employee or anyone that breaks that trust, we take that very seriously. Now, the school district does do random testing throughout the school year but says it's evaluating how often to administer those tests. Fletcher's attorney declined to comment. In Montgomery County, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. Caitlin, thank you. Fletcher isn't expected back in court until mid-September. At least 90% of Americans have a smartphone. For many, it's the only phone they use. But how accurate are cell phones when you make an emergency call? Will dispatchers be able to locate you? We put those questions to the test in Madison County where rural areas can lead to inaccurate information for emergency workers. I think you get to the center quickly, but I think it does take precious minutes away. If you're not aware of your surroundings or if you're unable to speak your surroundings, it does, it takes a little bit of time just to get those calls for service started. Tonight on WKYT News at 6, our Miranda Combs tested 911 response times in different parts of Madison County when only a cell phone was used. Former President Bill Clinton is in the Commonwealth today. He is campaigning for his wife Hillary as she inches closer to securing the Democratic nomination. Bill Clinton began his day in Owensboro and he'll be heading to Frankfurt next. That's an event at 2.30, a couple of hours away. WKYT's Victor Puente is at the Capitol Plaza Hotel with a preview of that. Victor? With two candidates still in the Democratic race for president, Kentucky is receiving national attention, including another visit from Bill Clinton. Former President Clinton was in Owensboro earlier today. He's now on his way here to Frankfurt, where he's expected to talk at the Capitol Plaza Hotel at 2.30. Then he'll go on to Prestonsburg, where he's expected to speak at an elementary school there at 7.45. All of these events are open to the public. Last week, Hillary and Bill Clinton, along with her rival for the Democratic nomination, Bernie Sanders, all made stops in Kentucky. Sanders won primaries in Indiana and West Virginia, but he's still trailing Hillary Clinton because of the amount of superdelegates expected to pledge their support for her. While the Democratic primary is getting most of the attention, there are races for Senate and representative for both parties that will be decided next Tuesday. In Frankfurt, Victor Puente, WKYT. And Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes says she only expects about 20% of Kentucky's registered voters to cast ballots in Tuesday's primary elections. Donald Trump is spending the day in Washington for a series of meetings with high ranking Republicans, including House Speaker Paul Ryan and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell. They're talking about ways to bring the Republican Party together after a divisive primary election. Weijia Jang reports from Capitol Hill. Donald Trump offered a wave before heading into the Republican National Committee building. The party's presumptive nominee sat down with House Speaker Paul Ryan and RNC Chairman Reince Priebus. Afterward, Ryan and Trump issued a joint statement saying, This was our first meeting, but it was a very positive step toward unification. Outside, protesters staged what looked more like a circus. We should bring more money into politics. Demonstrators included those opposed to Trump's plans to deport undocumented immigrants. We're here trying to give them something that represents our community, and they have closed their doors. The much anticipated meeting came a week after Ryan publicly refused to endorse Trump, highlighting the party's struggle to end its infighting after a divisive primary season. But on Wednesday, Ryan seemed determined to move forward. We are committed to putting that effort in. I want to be a part of that unifying process so that we're at full strength this fall so that we can win this election. The meeting has drawn international attention. Here's the main door of the RNC building, and this is the scene right in front of it. A massive media filling the sidewalks on both sides of the street. 
Trump is also meeting with congressional Republicans today, talks that could define the future of the GOP. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Trump is under pressure to release his tax returns. 2012 Republican nominee Mitt Romney says if he does not, Trump should be disqualified from running. Kentucky Senator Mitch McConnell took some time before meeting with Trump to talk with some special visitors from Kentucky. The majority leader met with 26 officers from the Richmond Police Department. The group is in Washington, D.C. to attend a ceremony for National Police Week. The name of Richmond officer Daniel Ellis, who was murdered last year, will be added to the memorial this weekend. And WKYT providing uh, coverage of that uh, throughout to those events. Now, Kentucky native and actor Johnny Depp is telling the world how he really feels about the prospect of Donald Trump winning the presidency. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Depp says, quote, if Trump wins the White House, he'll be the last U.S. president because it just won't work after that. Depp famously spoofed the Republican presidential candidate in a mock documentary last winter, poking fun of Trump's book, The Art of the Deal. All right, a lot of uh, celebrities weighing in, of course. Well, the military is urging people to line up and honor a Navy SEAL killed in Iraq last week. We'll have more on the service for Charles Keating coming up on WKYT, Kentucky's number one midday news. Also ahead, pop star Justin Bieber is finding out it may be too late to say sorry to his fans. We'll explain next on WKYT. Welcome back to WKYT News at Noon. The remains of the Navy SEAL killed in Iraq last week are back in the U.S. this midday. The body of Petty Officer First Class Charles H. Keating IV has arrived at a naval base in San Diego, California. Keating was killed battling ISIS forces. He has several relatives who live in the Cincinnati area, but he will be buried at Fort Rosencrans, the National Cemetery in California. The Navy is asking the public to line the procession route tomorrow. It's the final day of competition at the Invictus Games in Orlando, Florida. A big focus this year was on the emotional wounds that many veterans struggle with years after their service, including PTSD. Retired Army Sergeant Monica Southall says winning gold for her shot put in discus helped her heal. And a gold medalist, Jamie Garza, also suffered a traumatic brain injury while in the Navy. He says the games have given him something to strive for. At home, trying to by yourself, you can only do so much, but when you're competing for a team, you don't want to let your teammates down. Garza says he already has his next goal in mind, and that is winning at the 2017 Games in Toronto. More than 500 current and former service members from 15 countries are taking part in the Paralympic competition. A longtime CBS News 60 Minutes correspondent Morley Safer says he is ready to retire. The 84 year old joined the news magazine as a full time correspondent in 1970, two years after the show premiered, making him the longest surviving, the longest serving correspondent in the history of the show. CBS will air an hour long special on his career Sunday night after 60 Minutes. You can watch it right here on WKYT. Well, no pictures, please. That's the latest word from Justin Bieber to his fans. In an Instagram post, the pop star said he feels, quote, like a zoo animal and will not take any more pictures with fans. He also says people who bought his albums got exactly what they paid for, an album. According to People.com, the post comes after an incident in Boston when a family asked to take a picture with him and then he declined. They implied they deserved a photo because they bought his album. Some of Bieber's fans are lashing out on social media, saying he signed up for the fame and must deal now with the consequences. All right. <laughs> He's had his issues with the fame through the years, right? That's right. Yeah. Uh, love affairs sometimes and right. sometimes not with the fans. A family's fears after a large hole is going to cause the, uh, could cause the ground to collapse in their front yard coming up. Our Phil Pendleton will have reaction from the homeowners coming up at 1230. Looking outside and still not seeing much go on. I do want to point this out. Look down toward Tennessee. See those little blips showing up? 
That's the start of spotty showers and thunderstorms through the afternoon. And then once you get deep into the afternoon, off towards your nighttime hours, that's when the line rolls on through. So let's let's break it down for you. The hit and miss thunderstorms move in from 1 p.m. to 4 p.m. So here in about 45 minutes, you'll start to see a few of these actually cross over the state line and move off into our far southern half, places like Wayne County, McCreary County. That's not so much your severe threat, but still heavy downpours, a lot of rain out of this, and also a lot of lightning. So that moves in. This moves in 1 to 4 p.m. Kids coming home may come home through some thunderstorms. But your main severe threat, you could have isolated severe out of this, but your main severe threat actually comes from 5 p.m. to midnight. Let me break that down for you, okay? And let's go hour by hour. We get into the rest of the afternoon. Look at that just kind of moving on in and sparking up. Those are spotty. Not everybody will see that, but look at your main line. It's kind of a broken line, but it's back toward the west. And these are the big boomers, okay? These are the ones that roll on in, and they'll have heavy downpours, a lot of lightning, a lot of thunder. And there's 8 p.m. right across the 75 corridor, and also isolated severe threat, okay? But the main focus still is that flooding concern. Look toward 11 p.m. They're starting to move on out. This is some good news. I mean, it's not going to be all night long that you hear thunder rolling on through. And so by midnight into about 2 a.m., the thunderstorms are long gone. And then we look for a pretty nice morning tomorrow morning, uh, starting off there in the 50s. Let's check out your next seven days. Finally, a nice day in store. Friday looks phenomenal. It's a short break, though. First half of Saturday actually looks like a couple of showers, and then second half looks a little bit better. Still kind of some chilly air rolling on impossible frost there. Sunday morning, heads up, your green thumb alert. We'll be right back with more news, weather, and sports right after the break. It appears Mark Stoops has finally gotten his man after a long, long search. Florida International coach Matt House coming here to become the inside linebackers coach and the special teams coach after being in town for a second interview yesterday. Uh, it was House who interviewed for the job. He comes here after a search. 37-year-old spent 2015 as Florida International's defensive coordinator after two seasons as Pitt's defensive coordinator. House has four years of NFL experience with the St. Louis Rams and the Carolina Panthers. One change this will mean on the staff is that uh, defensive coordinator DJ Elliott will coach the outside linebackers. Now House will coach the inside linebackers. Well, when John Calipari first came to Kentucky, he made it clear that he respected and was a student of this program's great tradition. A big part of that, Adolph Rupp showcasing his teams in the Big Apple. And again this year, Cal will do just the same. First of all, the Wildcats will go to historic Madison Square Garden for its Champions Classic matchup against Michigan State on November the 15th. Then on December 11th, it plays Hofstra at the Barclays Center in New York. The matchup will be the first game of the 2016 Brooklyn Hoops Winter Festival doubleheader. Long Island and Brooklyn, uh, LIU Brooklyn rather, and St. John's will follow the UK Hofstra game. Kentucky's 2016 visit to the Barclays Center will be its fourth in the arena since it's opened in 2012. Wildcats are 2-1 and one in the building. Game times and network assignments have not yet been made. The softball Wildcats open SEC tournament play just a couple of hours in Starkville against seven-seeded LSU. First pitch set for 2:30. UK is the second seed in the tourney and is all but a lock to host an NCAA regional. But the big prize the Cats are thinking about is a super regional. Beating the Tigers is the first step to making that happen. That's the goal. And, and the other reason that ranking is important because with us to have a buy is, is a big deal from a pitching staff standpoint. So the fact that we have one day off lets um, both Megan and Nunley rest a little bit longer. But yeah, it is a big deal. To be ranked is a big deal. To host um, in front of your crowd because we have such a great crowd. We, the Big Blue Nation always shows out for the postseason. And I think that would give us a huge home field advantage. So I, I feel good about our odds for regionals. And right now we're a bubble team for super regionals. So hopefully we'll make a, a good run in the SEC tournament. And that will help the selection committee maybe give us the nod. Again, that's 2 30 this afternoon on the SEC Network. Tonight in the Big Blue Insider with Dick Gabriel, Eric Crawford from WDRB.com. John Calipari breaks down Kentucky's recruiting class for 2016. That's at 6 on 6 30 WLAP. Our Brent Kearney is also in Chicago for the start of the NBA draft combine. Jamal Murray not on the media availability list, but reports are he's been meeting with teams. What does that mean? A lot of times guys just have their individual workouts, whatever it is. We'll have the latest for you coming up on WKYT News at 4. Guys, that's all. For sports here on this Thursday. All right, Dave, thank you very much and keep it here. There's a lot more news coming up on WKYT. A central Kentucky home is destroyed by fire.
Coming up at 1230, we will have details on the murder case against a 15-year-old being tried as an adult in a deadly Lexington shooting. Tomorrow night's Mega Millions jackpot is $161 million, and Saturday night's Powerball jackpot is $50 million.